This is part 92 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss DDL triggers in SQL Server. In SQL Server, there are four types of triggers. First, we have DML triggers. DML stands for Data Manipulation Language. We discussed these triggers in parts 43 to 47 of SQL Server tutorial. And then we have DDL triggers. DDL stands for Data Definition Language. In this video, we'll discuss DDL triggers. And then we have CLR triggers. CLR stands for Common Language Runtime. And finally, Log On triggers. So what are DDL triggers? DDL triggers fire in response to DDL events. So the immediate obvious question that comes to our mind is, what are DDL events and when are these events raised? Now, Whenever you create, alter, or drop a database object, then a corresponding DDL event is raised. For example, when you create a table using create table DDL statement, you know, the associated event is create underscore table. So that event is raised. And if you have a trigger associated with that event, then when you create a table, automatically that associated trigger will be fired. Similarly, when you drop a stored procedure, drop underscore procedure event is raised. When you create a function, create underscore function DDL event is raised. So for the full list of DDL events, please visit this MSDN link. I'll have this link available on my blog in case you need it. So on this page, you can find the complete list of DDL events. So for example, when you create a function, look at that create underscore function event is raised. Similarly, when you alter a function, alter underscore function event is raised. When you drop a function, drop underscore function function. Similarly, for table, we have you know, similar events, create underscore table, alt underscore table, drop underscore table. And for a stored procedure, we have similar events, create underscore procedure, alt underscore procedure, drop underscore procedure. So whenever you execute DML statements, associated DDL events are raised. And if you have triggers associated with those events, they are fired automatically. Not only the DML statements are going to fire DDL triggers, we also have certain system stored procedures that perform DDL-like operations. And these system stored procedure can also fire DDL triggers. One such system stored procedure is SP underscore rename. We use this system stored procedure to rename a database object. For example, we can use it to rename a table or a column in a table. So whenever we do that using the system stored procedure, it's going to raise rename event and if you have a trigger associated with that event it will be fired automatically when you rename an object in fact we'll look at an example of doing that in this video so what are the uses of DDL triggers there are several now if you want to execute some code in response to a specific DDL event you can do that because DDL triggers are fired in response to DDL events so you can put whatever code you want to execute within the body of that trigger and whenever you create a table, create underscore table DDL event is raised and the associated trigger is going to execute that code. Similarly, if you want to prevent certain changes to your database schema, you can use a DDL trigger. For example, let's say you want to prevent users from creating, altering or dropping tables. You can do that using a DDL trigger. In fact, we'll look at an example of how to do that in this video. And then you can also use a DDL trigger to order the changes that the users are making to the database structure. Now let's say whatever changes people are making to the database schema, I want to capture all those changes. You know, I want to audit those changes and maybe store them in a table. We can very easily achieve that using a DDL trigger. For example, if somebody modifies a table, I want to capture information like what is the login name of the user who modified that? What is the name of the table? What is the name of the database in which that table is present? What is the date and time when he did that modification? What is the exact DML statement that they have executed to do, do that modification? All that information can be captured using a DDL trigger. In fact, we'll look at an example of how to do that in a later video session. And here we have the syntax for creating a DDL trigger. So here, you know, we start that with create trigger and then we have the trigger name and then we use the on keyword and then we specify the scope of the trigger. We can create DDL triggers in a specific database or a server-wide trigger. If you want to create you know, a trigger whose scope is database, then you use the database keyword, otherwise server. We'll discuss creating server-wide DDL triggers in a later video session. And then we use the for keyword and then specify the DDL events list here. 
So if you want this trigger to be fired for three events, create underscore table, alt underscore table, drop underscore table, you simply separate those events using a comma. And then you use the ask keyword, begin and, within begin and end, you'll have your trigger body. Let's look at an example now. So here we have a very simple example. Create trigger, the name of the trigger, and then we use the on keyword and database. So we are creating a trigger whose scope is database. And then for create underscore table. So the name of the event is create underscore table. So whenever you execute create table DML statement, this event is raised and we have a trigger associated with that event. So whenever you create a table, this procedure will be automatically be fired and it's going to print this message, new table created. Let's look at that in action. So I have this exact same code already typed here. So I'm going to execute this and it says command completed successfully. Now to see the trigger that we have just created, so we have cre executed this code within the context of sample DB database and we are creating a trigger whose scope is the current database. So it should be created in sample DB database. So expand that and then go to programmability folder and within that expand database triggers. If you can't find the trigger that you have just created, right click on that and select refresh from the context menu and you should find the trigger. So that's our trigger. Now here we have create table statement which is going to create a test table with one column. So when we execute this, it should automatically print this message because this trigger will be fired. Look at that, the table should have been created and the table is created here and whatever message you know we have here that's printed, you know, which means this trigger is fired. So if you look at this trigger, this is fired in response to a single event. Now let's say I want this trigger to be fired for, you know, alter and drop table events as well. If that's the case, you simply need to separate the event names using a comma. So I want this to be fired for alter table and drop table events as well. So let's go ahead and alter this and let's change the message here. And let's change the message to you have just created, altered, or dropped a table. So let's execute this. And now if we try to drop a table, so drop table and the name of the table is test. So this trigger should be fired. Notice that it's fired and we get the message. All right, so the examples that we have looked at so far, these triggers are executing some code in response to those DDL events. Now, another use of triggers is that you can prevent certain changes to your database schema. Now, the changes I want to prevent are, let's say, whenever somebody tries to create or alter or uh, drop a table, you know, I won't, I don't want that to happen. I want to prevent those changes. I can do that using a DDL trigger. So within the trigger, I am simply going to say, roll back. So let's alter this and then let's change the message to you cannot create, alter or drop a table. So let's execute this alter statement. Now when we try to create a table look at that we get the message you cannot create, alter or drop a table and look at the message here the transaction ended in the trigger. So this trigger basically rolled back the change. So we are not allowed to create a table. And if I actually refresh this, look at that, we, ha we don't have that test table there. Okay, so now the only way to create, alter, drop a table is by either disabling this trigger or deleting the trigger. And to disable the trigger, you can use the simple command, disable, trigger and the name of the trigger. So the name of the trigger is TR my first trigger. And then this is a database scope trigger. So we have to use on database keyword and then we execute this. So now the trigger is disabled. So if we execute this create table statement now, it should be completed successfully because we have disabled the trigger. And if we refresh this, we should have the test table there. Okay. Now to enable the trigger, you simply have to use enable instead of disable. And if you want to delete the trigger, you have got two options. You can either right click on that and select delete from the context menu, or you can use 
drop trigger trigger name on database and when we execute this the trigger should have been deleted so the trigger is gone now All right. Now we also discussed that certain system stored procedures that perform DDL-like operations can also fire DDL triggers. And one such system stored procedure is SP underscore rename. We use that stored procedure to change the name of a database object. Now let's actually create, you know, if you look at SP underscore rename system stored procedure, it raises rename event. So I'm going to create a trigger for rename event and what I want to do is print a message saying you just renamed something so you just renamed something and let's alter this so it says um, you know invalid because we don't have the trigger anymore because we are using the alter statement there so let's use create so now the trigger is created now, whenever we rename an object, you know, it could be a table or it could be a column. So if you want to rename a table, you use the system stored procedure, SP underscore rename, and then specify your current table name and the new table name. And, you know, if you want to rename a column, you specify the table name dot column name, and then your new column name, and you have to use this column, um, you know, parameter here. So let's quickly look at that. So when we rename a table, at the moment we have a table with name test. So I'm going to use SP underscore rename and we want to change the name of this table from maybe test to new test. And look at this, when we execute this system stored procedure, it's going to ra uh, raise this rename event and we have a trigger associated with that event. So it should execute this trigger and print that message. So let's look at that. Look at that. It prints that message. You just renamed something. And along the same lines, if you want to rename a column in that table, you can use you know this system stored procedure to do that. And even in that case, you know this trigger will be fired. Thank you for listening and have a great day.